In this video, I'm going to take what is usually an eyesore or an object of pity and instead build a conversation piece. Let's get to it. While doing research for this build, I found that other people wanting a more natural wood look would just debark tree limbs. And while this looked like a little bit of fun, it didn't look like that much fun. So I'm going to let water do the work for me by using driftwood. I found this neat piece and my dad was roughly able to cut it to size with his chainsaw. All right, so here is the piece of driftwood out of the water and up close. It looks a lot bigger than I thought it was. So I may have to cut it down a little bit. I also have no idea if my wife's gonna like this or if we'll just be selling it in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. So for this cat tree, I'm gonna need a fairly large base so it doesn't fall and hurt Taz or more importantly, our children. But permanently screwing a very large base to the bottom is gonna make it fairly difficult or potentially impossible to move and maneuver through doorways. So my plan is to permanently attach a small piece of plywood to the base of the tower. This piece will make the tower easy to move and allow it to stand on its own temporarily. Then that small piece will be screwed into a larger piece of plywood, which will provide the stability for it while in use. I'm going to attach these two pieces with machine screws and threaded inserts instead of wood screws. Wood screws would become weaker with each installation, and I'm not sure how much us or the future owners will have to assemble and disassemble this. For all the screws to go in smoothly to the inserts, they'll need to be as close as possible to perpendicular to the face of the wood. To help me not hold the drill at an angle when I make these holes, I made this janky looking jig. I'll drill the holes in the larger piece using the smaller piece as a guide so that they perfectly match up. And at this stage of the project, it's always important to do a couple curls. Surely the rest of the jokes will be better than that, right? The widest part of the inserts is this flange at the top, so I'm actually going to install them from the bottom so they're much less likely to pull out of the wood. I'll also use that same jig to make sure I start these at a 90 degree angle. When the two base pieces are screwed together, I don't want the screws to stick up, so I'm using these flathead screws, and then I'm going to countersink the wood holes so that they sit flush with the top. This is a lot of work for someone who doesn't even like their cat that much. Before I permanently attach the small base piece to the driftwood, I want to make sure the driftwood can balance on its own. This way that joint between the base and the trunk won't be under stress unless the cat is jumping on or off the tower. And if you're wondering if the driftwood really is this heavy, or if I'm just struggling with it due to my lanky physique, I'll leave that conclusion up to you. Well, I did feel clever sticking the shot vac to the power washer handle, since I don't have a fancy sander. It uh, didn't really collect much dust. but. It was fun to pretend I was keeping the garage cleaner. After using the sander some, it was definitely closer to being balanced, but there was still a little bit more needed to take off. I decided to try my router a little bit to speed up the process. And then finally, look at that. Perfectly balanced. I did the old slap test to see how stable it was. We're looking pretty good. Rounding the edges on the wood is a great way to make it look like your second project instead of your first project. Once it's complete, we plan to have the square base of the tower pushed up against the wall so it's as out of the way as possible. Because of this, we need to decide now what orientation the tower will be in relation to the base. I went back and forth for quite a while on how to make this joint strong and ended up using wood glue and that's it. I'm just kidding. I used some nails to hold it in place before inserting some large lag screws. After reviewing the size of the larger base again, I did decide to make it a little bit smaller. We want it to be safe, but not too safe, you know? To finish this piece of very exotic project plywood, I'll use a dark oil-based stain. The floors in our living room are a similar color, so I'm hoping this base will blend in visually and not seem so large. The intent is it just looks like a piece of wood coming straight out of the floor. As I apply a few coats, we'll arrive at by far the largest mistake I made on this project. You made a big mistake! Huge! So, right here, you'll see I tape off the bottom of the tower because I want to use a different finish on it as the base. But going one piece tall ended up being a very poor decision. You can see here I went above the tape line and got stained on the trunk, which started a long, painful process of trying to remove it. I'm sure at the time I thought, painter's tape costs some amount of money, and I don't like to waste money. But the more methods I tried, the worse that that decision aged. Sanding would remove it, but would also kind of spread it to the parts that I wasn't sanding. And then even for the area where it was removed, I then had this transition from what I think is called live bark to like the normal interior of the tree, which turned out to be much more distinct than I anticipated. I finally forked over the money for some high powered paint and varnish stripping gel. This allowed me to scrape off the stain with the dried gel, which did work, but not quickly. More than five hours of labor later, I had something that was 
good enough. More of the story, risking a significant amount of your time to save basically no money isn't worth it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. And if you're thinking, wow, this guy knows nothing about woodworking. Why do you try all those things to remove the stain? Uh, yeah. Do you think the channel name was a joke? Anyway, on top of the oil-based stain, I'm gonna put a couple coats of polyurethane. The one I chose has a satin finish, which won't make it shiny, but it'll give it a little bit of a sheen that you would expect from finished furniture. So the top portions of the tree that were cut off by a chainsaw or my jigsaw earlier aren't looking very driftwoody. So to fix that, I'm gonna go over them all with my orbital sander. Now for the finish of the tree. Others online used epoxy or gloss finishes, but this changes the color of the wood significantly and didn't look very natural. I originally thought I was gonna try a matte lacquer finish, but my neighbor suggested I try paste wax. I was skeptical, but in the portions I tested, the paste wax looked much more natural than the lacquer. I did sand before applying paste wax, but this was a total waste of time as it was unnecessary and actually made it look worse in a portion where I removed part of the living bark. The paste wax instructions call for using cheesecloth, so naturally I decided to ruin a perfectly good kitchen sponge instead, before later figuring out an old t-shirt actually worked a lot better. The paste wax works pretty much like car wax though. You apply it and then after about 15 minutes or so it'll fully cure, and then you can buff it off for a finish that is smooth to touch and doesn't alter the color of the wood. So now the base and the trunk, or whatever you want to call it, is complete. We can assemble it together. It's looking pretty good. Pretty good! Pretty, pretty good. For the shelves, I'm not really sure what I want yet. So I'll cut some cardboard to the same width as a 1x10 I'll get from my nards later. Then I'll trim them roughly to size, hold them up on the tree to see how they look, think about if our cat can make these jumps or not, and repeat the process till I'm happy with it. Since I don't have a good idea of what I want, this should be a lot faster than doing the same process with wood. When I'm happy with how it looks, I can use those pieces of cardboard as templates to cut the wood for the shelves. One thing I did not account for is the cardboard templates had a thickness of basically zero and the wood doesn't. It's about three quarters inch thick and the branches are at angles where I'm mounting it. So I'll have to cut these bevels so it'll sit snug against the tree. So our cat doesn't fall, I need to put some kind of carpet on these shelves. I really dislike the cat tree look of completely wrapping the shelves in long pile carpet though. Like, a lot. I think this is the key to why they look so bad and you immediately know it's a cat tree. Two thumbs down. So instead, I'll be using some low pile carpet left over from our stairs. Not wrapping the shelves though presents the problem of seeing the edge of the carpet, which doesn't exactly look professional. So my plan is to router out the interior of the shelf so that the carpet sits a little below the wood and the edge is hidden by that lip. Best of both worlds, the cat has grip and a soft-ish place to lay, and my living room doesn't look like garbage. Well, at least I hope so. We'll see. For the color of the shelves, I want them to match the trunk, and I thought that was gray, but after staining the shelves gray, that proved incorrect. After I added one coat, though, of the color I used on the base, it matched almost perfectly. Sometimes, it's better be lucky than good. So my plan to cut out the carpet was just to use the utility knife, because I'm thrifty and that's what I already have. Unfortunately, this didn't keep me from cutting it on the wrong side of one of the paper templates, and also this created a super frayed edge. The small lip on the shelves was not going to be able to hide this shoddy of workmanship. Luckily, after some research, I found this. It's an electric scissors. I'd never heard of this before, but apparently they are somewhat popular for cutting cardboard or carpet. If you find yourself doing a project where either is required, I would recommend getting one. For this project, I had to make a bunch of small cuts to the carpet so it fit on the shelf, so it's definitely worth the 30 bucks or whatever it cost. For attaching the shelves, I want them to look as natural as possible. So I'm gonna put each of them on the tree using pocket holes and screws. This alone obviously won't be enough to hold up our fat cat though. So I'll use some extra pieces of driftwood as additional support and hopefully they'll just look like branches. So I have a personal goal to reach 4,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of the year. And while you obviously don't care about the personal goals of an internet stranger, if you find builds like this interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. A disclaimer though, don't subscribe for more cat projects. I don't even like our cat that much, and this will probably be the last cat related thing I build. I'm not going to, so quit asking. So for the driftwood supports, one side I had to cut flat with my miter saw, but the other side needed to have a curved surface so it would sit flush against the tree. I couldn't think of a good way to do this, so I just did it the slowest way possible by cutting it out with my Dremel. At this point, I had to take a quick break because the boss came by for a quick structural inspection. For attaching the top of the supports, I used self-tapping screws through a pilot hole in the shelf. For the bottom ones, again, wasn't really sure what I was doing. 
I tried to wood screw on this middle one, but then realized it'd be a lot faster and easier to use my nail gun. So I did that on the top one while taking some video footage of my hat. On the bottom one, I didn't want to add a piece of driftwood for some reason, so I tried using these black brackets since they would be below most people's line of sight anyway. As you may be able to guess though, these weren't very confidence inspiring, and I ended up going back and adding a support here later so our cat would trust the shelf. So to close out the tower, I'll go ahead and wrap some of the sizzle rope around it. And while our cat hasn't used it for scratching yet, I still have hope. And then finally, we'll staple on the carpet pieces. And just like that, it's time to move it inside. This tree that I'm moving out was actually my first woodworking project. It's basically just stained 2x4s and carpet, all made with borrowed tools, but I was pretty proud of it being a step up from a tree you'd get from a big box store. It's neat to look back on that and see, though still pretty average, how far I've come. Ignoring the stain removal debacle, the material costs on this project were pretty low since the main structure was... free. In total, the materials were $138. Not too bad. So initially, our cat was not keen on it, maybe because it needed a couple more supports, but he eventually adopted it enough that we decided to keep it instead of selling it. But the real question is, if we had sold it, how much would it be worth? I don't have an answer to this, but I do have a few data points. One, real wood cat trees like this, that are about half the size, can sell in the neighborhood of $300 online. Two, I found a company that sells this, and while it's definitely a different take, they are charging $725. And lastly, I did list it briefly on Marketplace, and while I didn't get any takers at $900, someone did reach out just to tell me it was beautiful. So I don't know. You tell me how much you think it's worth. Maybe enough to make another one. And if you're curious as to why I made this, which you probably aren't, but I bet Taz that he couldn't learn to shake. Thanks for watching.